What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and today we got a fake channel with Mythic Loki and Loki's Lokis are being covered by the Mist which reassures me because I'm not the only one who's concerned about the YouTube demonetization. So we have got Mythic Loki and she's got Divine Deceit as her preferred slotsy skill. So instead of enemy phase or player phase, it is going to be having the resistance check and if Loki wins that check, then she's going to be having gravity ploy. So this way you're able to function as a better tactics room and then you also inflict the ploy status and the exposure status on the foes in three rows or three columns centered on Loki. And this is extremely good for an Aetherate's defense unit because you're going to be disabling bonus doubler status, the grand strategy status, and she's a dark mythic, so this is definitely really helpful. And then after the start of turn effects have triggered, she's able to neutralize the status of foes in three rows and three columns that have more than or equal to three bonus status active on them. So this is going to be punishing a lot of people that are going to be using Asker with Pini because you pretty much have four status effects from there. So she's just going to be neutralizing it just like Duo Thor does it with her duo button. But here she's going to be doing to the foes in three rows and three columns. And she's not going to be needing any kind of resistance check, which is a huge thing. So along with Embla, this is going to be making tanking harder because Embla is going to be getting rid of the in combat effects with her feud status. And then Loki takes on the visible status effects and just yoinks them. So that is going to be pretty annoying. And then she can also get plus 5 attack and resistance in the combat if there's any kind of penalty active on the foe. She does come with a new Slobby skill in Dazzling Discord which is better than Dazzling Shift because it doesn't really do too much for many of the flyers who can already just get the mobility. So Dazzling Discord at least is going to be inflicting the closest foes in 5 spaces of the unit and foes in 2 spaces of them with the Discord status if they have less resistance. So it is going to be helping a unit like Loki who's going to be having high resistance and then you inflict minus 4 attack and resistance debuff on the foe and you get the dazzling staff effect. For her weapon she has got supreme thok and this is going to be having canto 1 built in. So this can be helpful in summoner duels and then you're going to be having wrathful staff built in and also minus and special cooldown and she also gets pretty much the pulse of blades effect where it's a better skill than time pulse. Because even if your special is not at max cooldown, you're going to be getting that pulse effect at sort of every turn. So this way she's going to be having pre-charged glitter of light at sort of turn 2. And she's also able to get extra attack and resistance in combat depending on 20% of her visible resistance added by 6. And then because she's a slow unit, she gets the guaranteed follow up attack and also gets true damage based on 20% of her resistance. Healers can only run AoE specials to begin with so... Obviously, this is not going to be getting added to the AoE specials and she is at least going to be having a bit better damage output because of getting the true damage from it and the way that she can pre-charge her special is actually going to be really helpful. She does come with Glitter of Light, which is the special to be run in Aetherate's defense because of its flash status. So this way, Loki is going to be stopping any kind of team that doesn't have Null kind of Disrupt uh, tanks. So overall, Loki is going to be functioning as a really amazing dark mythic, in my opinion pretty much the best dark mythic because there's not really that much of a competition and she does have good synergy with Embla, like I said, for countering tanks. You're still going to be able to play around her because her effects are in three rows or three columns so you can always try and tank um, you know, away from that but still um, she's going to be providing amazing support as a staff flyer and we do have her mythic banner at the end of this month. So it is going to be active and you can expect nurse Loki. I don't know why she looks like a nurse. I'm not sure. <laughs> and she is going to be introducing merge or deals, which is only going to be getting unlocked if you have one merge or more. So this is going to be giving you 600 dragon flower of that movement type. And this is not going to be retroactively available for the older legendary mythic or emblem heroes. So if you have a plus one emblem art, you're not going to be able to get 600 um, infantry dragon flowers and this is only going to be from the version 8.4 and afterwards. So this is definitely not that good because uh, you cannot really spark on these legendary mythic or emblem hero banners as a fruitable player. You need to have fate pass and even if you have fate pass getting the plus one merge is a slippery slope because you're going to be having the color sharing not necessarily you're going to be able to get that hero easily to plus one merge. And it may take a lot of orbs, so this is pretty much their way of incentivizing 
people to pull for the merges because merges have lost their value over the years. Of course, for Legendary and Mythic units, the merges do matter for the scoring and also for the Emblem heroes for the stats. But overall, nowadays, we have seen so many effects and a lot of stats that merges are not really mattering that much for the units. So they just want to monetize the end of the month banners a lot harder, which is a bit of a shame that it's not applied retroactively because a lot of people are probably going to be having plus one merge, Legendary Mythic or Emblem heroes that are old. So we would have been able to get the Dragon Flowers if it was retroactively. So that's a bit disappointing. And then we have Golden Week and it is going to be having the celebration and we're going to be getting some login bonuses. So at least we get the free dragon flowers here, but still they're not really enough, especially the infantry dragon flowers. And we're going to be having the hero fest for all of the two Zor legends banners. So if you're trying to complete them, then this is going to be helpful. Just as a reminder, we're going to be getting two Zor legends seven banner in May uh, for the forging bonds run. So you could definitely try and spark there because the spark on these hero fest banners are only available for the pay pass subscribers. So you're not able to do this if you're completely free to play player and you can actually get four sparks, which is quite a lot. So if you're trying to finish up your merge projects, then this is going to be a good time. And you can also make use of the rerun of 2017 next month. And we're going to be getting three tickets for each banner. So the free summons can be fun if you get lucky and you're going to be getting 21 total tickets, which is Quite a lot so a lot of free summons right there and it is going to be helping you with the sparks and we also have rooker siege coming back so it's been more than a year since we got our last rooker siege event and for this upcoming rooker siege we're going to be able to get 1000 dragon flowers of each type it is not going to be a norm going forward we're going to be having pretty much the similar rewards like we used to have in the past and we're going to be having rooker siege in this week itself so from the data that I've been able to see in the game, we don't really have any kind of changes to the gameplay aspect of Rooker Siege. It's not like the enemies are going to be stronger. So you can expect Spring Loki and regular Loki as part of round one. And then round two has got Thor and Hell. And then round three has got Summer Thor and Summer Lake Yarn. And nowadays it is going to be pretty easy to cheese Rooker Siege because we have got units like uh, Winter, Edelgard and also Legendary Female Shez and a lot of guard effects so it is going to be making it a lot easier for you to grind up the score in Rooker Siege and pretty much get the max rewards so I'm not really sure why they stopped to begin with and now why they are suddenly resuming it without really changing much when it comes to the gameplay aspect this is that we're going to be able to get the dragon flowers which is good I suppose and then we have got the information for the new update next month and we do have the remix of Legendary Seagard and Legendary Male Pilot. So Legendary Seagard is going to be getting Holy Knight 2, which is going to be giving you that player phase damage reduction on foe's first attack. Kind of similar to Rearm Lucina. So now he's able to get that status and he also gets a slight boost to his special damage. And after the special has been triggered, he's going to be giving the plus six attack and defense buff, the player phase first attack damage reduction and also plus one movement to all of the allies. So this is a bit disappointing remix because he doesn't really get the Quicken Pulse like T-Time Sigurd. It would have been a lot better because he still has to run Quicken Pulse unless he gets that in his Weapon Refine. So they have not really remixed Crusader's Ward. Instead, they've given him Seal Defense 4. So that just goes to show you how useless his preferred skill is. Even Seal Defense 4 is going to be a bit better. So unfortunately, he doesn't really get any kind of good remix skill. Attack Defense Clash at least would have been, you know, something bare minimum. Fatal Smoke 4 would have been a lot better because we have got so many non-special miracle effects and a lot of healing. That certainly would have been, you know, something that he could use, but unfortunately he's going to get sealed defense. And then we have got Legendary Mail Pilot getting Time Pulse built into his Sublime Heaven 2. So now he doesn't really have to run it in his Slotsy and he can instead run Attack Speed Oath 4, which he's going to be getting as a remix skill. It also gets a slight boost when it comes to the special damage and of course it is a damage reduction piercing special and I hope that he can get some kind of special jumping like a Lysithia's weapon refine because scowl effects are really really annoying when you have this kind of playstyle of pre-charging or special and then pretty much triggering it. So I, I think this is a bit of a decent remix compared to Seagard who doesn't really get quick and pulse or even time pulse in his weapon refine. 
whereas Violet is able to get that and in the future, whenever we get better slotsy skills, it is going to be something that he'll be able to run. We also have a change to the weekly revivals where we're going to be seeing three of them each week, so more free summons are definitely good and if you're trying to plan any kind of merge projects then this could help you uh, just get that banner a lot faster. So more free summons are always good and let me know in the comments what do you think about this Fae channel and what do you think about Mythic Loki as our next Dark Mythic. You can click the link on your screen right now to check out my former builds for this month's Hollow Forms and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube set boxes are about as functional as free to play players sparking on Legendary Mythic and Emblem Hero banners. So that's the all to you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.